Thank you for joining this Masonry Minute brought to you by the Masonry Institute of Michigan. <clears throat> Today we will be discussing how we determine the fire resistance rating of a single white concrete masonry unit wall. In future Masonry Minute episodes, we will cover clay masonry unit walls as well as uh, composite walls that might have a masonry backup and a veneer. And to determine our fire resistance rating of a single white concrete masonry wall, we will be using the 2018 Michigan Building Code for today's example, which is exactly the same as in our 2015 Michigan Building Code. And so in section 703, which would be fire resistance ratings and fire tests, we have methods for determining fire resistance. And we have a list of six different options for concrete and clay masonry unit walls. Typically, we are in section 722, which would be our third option here, our calculations procedure in 722. And if we go here, this has different provisions for determining our calculated fire resistance for concrete assemblies, concrete masonry assemblies, and clay masonry assemblies. So specifically today, we will be in 703.3, which gives us option three, calculations procedure. We go to 722.3, which is our concrete masonry provisions. And our calculated fire resistance is based on something called our equivalent thickness. And equivalent thickness for ungrouted and partially grouted construction, which is typically what we have for most of our masonry walls here in Michigan, is obtained in accordance with ASTM C140. So our block test report data should have an equivalent thickness value listed in that uh, in conformance with ASTM C 140. For solid grouted construction, we get the total thickness of our wall. So for an eight inch unit, we get an equivalent thickness of 7.625 inches or seven and five eighths of an inch, which is our specified thickness. Uh, they will measure it to get an actual thickness of it. And so we do have tolerances on these, but we are allowed to use our actual thickness, which would be our specified thickness of seven and five eighths plus or minus whatever our tolerances are in ASTM C90. We also have the option if we need a higher fire resistance rating, but we do not have solid grouted construction, we could fill our air spaces and cells with an approved loose fill material. And in the IBC, we have a list of approved loose fill materials, such as sand, pea stone, crushed stone, or slag, pumice, scoria, expanded shale, expanded clay, expanded slate, expanded slag, fly ash, or cinders, or we have the option to use perlite or vermiculite. So if we have a solid grouted wall or we fill our cells with an approved material, we get an equivalent thickness T sub E equal to the actual thickness of our units. And what do we do with that value? Well, we go to this table 722.3.2 in our international building code and for various fire resistance ratings, it gives us a required equivalent thickness, which is a function of type of aggregate. And so for this example, if we are looking for a two hour fire rating, we are looking for an equivalent thickness value of either 3.2 or all the way up to 4.2 inches, depending on the type of aggregate used. And most of our producers are going to have different mixed designs, which incorporate these different types of aggregates. And so they should be able to provide you with, an, with a fire resistance rating for their units. If we wanted to look at typical units, we can go to NCMA's tech notes on fire resistance rating. And this shows that the equivalent thickness measured in accordance with ASTM C140, we basically take the whole solids of our units and we recast it as a solid unit. And so they have some typical values. So for a typical eight inch unit, uh, our equivalent thickness rating is about four inches. For a typical 12 inch unit, our equivalent thickness is 5.1 inches. And so with a typical equivalent thickness of four inches, we fall in this range unless we use all 100% gravel in our mixed design. And so for all of our eight inch units we manufacture here in Michigan, we can achieve a two hour fire rating, whether we are hollow or partially grouted. Again, if we have a partially grouted wall we are only allowed to use the equivalent thickness of our hollow wall. The fire does not know where that grout 
is and so our fire resistance rating would be based on that of a hollow unit unless we use an approved cell phone material. And so to specify our equivalent thickness, we would go to this table and we can figure out what thickness we need to achieve a certain fire resistance rating on MIM's website, which is masonryinfo.org under tools and resources. We did poll our producers here in Michigan. And so we have a fire rating guide, which shows the most cost effective way of achieving certain fire resistance ratings with CMU construction. And so for a two hour fire rating, if we have an eight inch wall, the preferred method would be with a normal weight or medium weight unit. Uh, the second preferred option would be with a lightweight unit. And so all of our eight inch units do meet a two hour fire rating here in Michigan, uh, hollow or partially grouted. If we need a three hour fire rating, we would then need to use cell fill with an eight inch unit. Our 10 inch and 12 inch units here in Michigan do meet a three hour fire rating for hollow or partially grouted construction. With a 12 inch unit, the most cost effective option would be a medium or lightweight unit. And if we do need a four hour fire rating, with a 12 inch unit, we would prefer to use a lightweight unit to keep the density and weight of that unit down. And so again, in quick summary, to determine our fire resistance rating of a single wave concrete masonry or CMU wall, we would use our calculation procedure in 722.3. We determine our equivalent thickness of our units, which our producer can provide us in accordance with ASTM C140, and we go to table 722.3.2 and figure out what required equivalent thickness we need to achieve different fire resistance ratings. And so if you have any questions on this, please feel free to reach out to us here at the Masonry Institute of Michigan, and we'd be happy to walk you through it. Thank you for joining today's Masonry Minutes on determining fire resistance ratings.